Hey, I'm Ruben. I work at Sockpop, and this is my next Patreon game. Uh, it's gonna be the sequel to Deer Hunter 2, and it's all 3D. Look at that. There's this whole desert and a fire. You can drink water in the game. The funny thing is, and people ask me this a lot, is that I use Game Maker. Here it says Game Maker Studio. So how do I manage to make a 3D effect in Game Maker? That's what this video is going to be about. I'll make a short basic 3D engine in this video and I'll link it as well so you can download and see how it works for yourself. Alright, so I made a new project already and the only thing it does is, is draw a bunch of balls like this, different colors. And it's, it looks nice but it doesn't look 3D enough yet. So we're going to make it into a 3D game. The first thing we're going to need if we're going to make a 3D game is a new dimension. Because you've seen the X coordinate, you've seen the Y coordinate, but you've not seen the Z coordinate yet. So let's add that real quick. The balls have a random radius and a random color. And we'll just add a Z coordinate, which is also random. Hmm, doesn't look very different yet. But it is 3D right now, you just can't see it yet. Okay, to make it more obvious that it's 3D, we can add a shadow under the ball. So we'll add a new draw event, which is fired before this one. And we'll just say, let's draw another circle at X and Y, and the Z coordinate will be zero. So we just won't add it. Then we'll have the same radius and the color will be gray. And the X and Y scale are one. Ah, looks more 3D already. Except you can kind of see that the red ball looks like it should be in front of the purple ball, but it's not. It's drawn behind it. Behind it. But you can see from the shadows that it should be in front. So one very simple trick you can do is change the depth of the ball, which determines the order in which things are drawn is inversely connected to the Y coordinate. Or the Y coordinate is higher, then the depth will be lower. So it will be more to the front. And if we run the game now, we'll see that, yeah, the red ball is in front of the purple ball. Perfect. But it still doesn't look very 3D, if you ask me. So one very handy thing is that I do is I add a new script which is called world position to screen position and I abbreviate it here so it's faster and this script will take an x, a y and a z coordinate and it will tell the game where this x, y and z coordinate will be in the screen right now the resulting screen x coordinates will just be x and the resulting screen Y coordinates will be Y minus Z, like we saw before. Right, so it just looks exactly the same as uh, it did just now. The handy thing is we can start to, just in this script, alter how this, is, how this works and it will translate automatically to where the ball is drawn. The first thing you want to do in a 3D game, I think, is you want to make stuff be able to rotate. So make the camera go like this. So what we need for that is a rotation variable. So we'll just add the rotation clause to this script. And we also take away the uh, this one, add it later. So minus set. Okay, let's see how it looks like. Yeah, now it's rotating nice around the center of the screen. All right, next up, we kind of want to be able to move the camera as well. It's kind of the same as in a 2D game, but we want to move it like this. So we see the mouse in all different areas of the screen. So now we can move the camera around very slowly. I'll increase the speed in a bit and also turn. It's looking nicer already. But if we want a real 3D engine, we also want to be able to move the camera like this. So it's more flat or just view from top, or view from the side, or from the bottom. 
Um, so we're just gonna go and add that real quick. How I do that is add a new variable called pitch. There we go. Oh, we start we started looking from the side. That's why it looks kind of funny. So we can go all the way over, turn the camera, move the camera, and even go beyond over, but let's not do that. But yeah, it looks, looks kind of 3D already. Um, but if you notice, the shadows are still, the shadows are still, uh, they kind of look, they look okay from the top, but they don't really look that great from the side. And the problem is that they're, they don't scale. Normally, a shadow should be smaller this way. But we can add that. So now we start out with no shadows, but as soon as we move the camera up, ah, there are the shadows. Beautiful. But if you notice now, there's a different problem. Namely that, for example, this green ball and this blue ball, uh, the blue ball is behind the green ball, but the green is drawn in front. So that's not exactly right. And it's, that's because the depth is still linked just to the Y coordinate. But as soon as you turn the camera, that's not true anymore. So we need a new variable for the depth of each object to make sure it's drawn in the correct order. So we can just say, instead of the depth being minus Y, we can use our handy function again and say that the depth is the same as the screen depth the, or the z-coordinate of the screen. And now you can see, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. We can go back to our green, blue. Look, the green is now in front of the blue one. Nice and easy. And look, it looks pretty 3D right now. Maybe we should add some gravity because the, the balls are just floating in the air. That's not really realistic, right? Let's add some gravity. See what happens. Yeah, they're bouncing right now. They're kind of slow, but uh, it looks, looks all right. Yeah, they're bouncing, bouncing nice, all right. good. The only thing I'm missing right now is in real life if something is far away it will look smaller and if something is close by it will look bigger. So all we need to do now is add perspective and we really want to have uh, a resulting scale. So if something is farther away we get a smaller scale of the object and something is closer by, we get a bigger scale. So we need another resulting variable. I call it res resulting screen scale. Um, and actually you can just add it here. And one thing you can do is just say, okay, if it's farther away, then the C coordinate in the screen is bigger because it's farther away. So we can just say that the scale is 1 divided by the z-coordinate. Now we have to take that into account for the radius of the ball. We can just multiply the radius by the scale we just made and also for the shadow. This is kind of what we want. But the, Things are behind. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so things that are farther away are now smaller. The effect is kind of really dramatic. <laughs> As you can see, like if we get really close, it goes crazy. So it, it kind of works. The things that are closer are now bigger. Um, but another thing that should be there if there's perspective is that things that are closer to you also go more to the side and of your viewpoint and things that are farther away go more to the center as well. So you can kind of see that 
the yellow ball now is, is kind of going past me like this. But it's the, the position is not changing on the screen. And that's why it looks so weird now. So this is not really what you expect. But we can fix that. Okay, there's something weird going on. But if we move back a little, we can see, yeah, it, it works. It looks very 3D. You can go past certain objects. But just if you go past them, then they turn up in front again. <laughs> uh, so we should say that things that are behind you are not actually drawn. <laughs> We didn't never told it to do that, but it looks it looks already like Doom or something. I'd also like the camera to be a bit higher, but we can just edit that by increasing the C coordinate of the camera. Let's do that. So it's uh, let's see it's zero right now, but we'll make it into uh, fifty. Let's run the game again. So we're a bit higher, we're a bit above the ball right now. But yeah, it looks very 3D. Just this effect isn't really... It, isn't, it looks cool, but it's really not what we want. It's like a mirror or something. Okay, so let's, uh, let's fix that. Yeah, so the weird effect is gone. And... Yeah, it looks very 3D. You could you could really make a game about this. Just that the the controls don't work if you uh, rotate the camera. That is fine. Yeah. All right. So that's basically how you do 3D in a 2D engine. I'll link um, the source code of this file so you can tinker around with it yourself. And now let's see some cool tricks I used for uh, my new game, Deer Hunter. Three, uh, using this same technique, just a bit more complicated, but uh, it essentially works in the same way. So one interesting thing I did, did already in this game is that you can kind of see this gradient going from this, the bottom of the screen to the horizon. And it looks like it's shading or something, but it's actually just, just a gradient. It never changes, no matter which way you turn. So it's actually very 2D. So it just goes from the bottom of the screen to here. Also the fire, which looks pretty 3D, but it's actually just, it just calculates the point where the fire begins and just adds a bunch of points that go up. And then I just draw a flat thing. You can actually see if you look from the top, it's just, it's just a flat billboard thing. The shadows were pretty interesting to do as well because there, there's no shadow engine. I just calculate the points that the sun, the angle of the sun with, for example, the person's head. And then I calculate that it's here. And then I just draw a circle here. That's all, that's all the shadows really are. But it looks very nice. Oh, there's some cutting issues, but uh, well, it's not a finished game yet. You can also climb up the trees, which is pretty cool. And so, oh, I'm stuck now. Uh oh. Well. Um, so yeah, you can do a lot of interesting stuff with just like uh, this basic 3D engine that I made. Um, so yeah, I hope that makes it more clear for you how the 3D in Game Maker works. I got a lot of questions about it, so I hope this clears it up a bit. If you still want to know more, I suggest looking into the the source code of the example project. I'll add some more stuff there as well to help you on your way. Some comments and some uh, more examples of what you can do. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye! If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the Sockpop Patreon. For $3 you get one game a month plus one bonus game. And for $5 you get early access to videos such as these. Thanks for watching!